and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to day three of Teach Miss. I hope you enjoyed my craft day yesterday. I, it was so much fun getting together with friends, so I hope that you enjoyed that, or at least got the notion of getting together with your friends, and um, yes, we do a lot of family stuff, but don't forget about your friends. So today is going to be a vlog style, and we are gonna go into my classroom. It's Monday, December 3rd, obviously. I just spent the morning, I got up at about six o'clock, I went through some baby clothes that were donated to me by um, one of my coworkers, so I went through some of them, um, decided which ones I was going to keep, and then threw them in the laundry, um, so I can kind of start getting them all where they need to be in the baby's room. Also meal prepped some breakfast burritos, so I just have like this yummy delicious breakfast burrito. Just used about a half a pound of breakfast sausage and then about six eggs, and it's going to make about four or five breakfast burritos for Greg and I until about Wednesday this week, so that'll be nice that we just have breakfast prepped. I have dinner already for tonight in the fridge, so that's perfect. We're doing good on, on productivity this week. Guys, I feel really good about, like, I feel almost back to normal for wedding coffee and first use productivity um, because I got up and I did my normal like morning routine and that has not happened in a while. I've just been kind of like floating through life <laughs> trying to figure out my life and today or at least the last few weeks I've really been feeling really good, um, really productive which is good because I'm doing 25 days of vlogmas. But I got up and I emptied my dishwasher even though I didn't have any dishes, any dirty dishes. I emptied the dishwasher because I know I will have them tonight so that'll just be one less thing that I have to think about tonight whenever I get home from work and I can and just edit so trying to think about my mornings and you know try and this can be a productivity tip for everyone not just setting up your morning to have a great evening routine and that's the same thing for an evening routine too there are things that you can do in the evening like setting out your clothes and um, prepping your coffee maker to get you ready for a productive morning so just little things like that I always try and have to make sure that I am I'm good to go so like I already had my lunch prep so I just grabbed it out of the fridge this morning so all right, well, I've got my coffee, my one my one allotted coffee a day. I treasure so dearly, guys. I drink this like all day long. But today is going to be um, how I incorporate Elf on the Shelf. So we wrote to an Elf to the North Pole last Friday, asked for a classroom Elf. And um, I've done Elf on the Shelf in the past, so I've done it different ways. I've done it like the true way, um, where we talk about, you know, he's watching you and um, bringing, you know, notes back to Santa and like, We'll go into all of this later because I need to get to school. I've learned different things over the years um, because I do have a fairly diverse multicultural classroom and um, I want to honor all of my cultures. I want to all honor all of my cultures and religions in my classroom, not just um, Christianity with the elf. So I want to be mindful of that. Um, so I'm going to tell you how I do Elf on the Shelf or how we're going to do it this year because today is day one of Elf on the Shelf. So we will see what happens. If I've been here a whole hour and did not see it. now so hopefully you can't hear hopefully you can't hear Greg's music in the background because it was really loud a second ago okay so now I want to talk about how I implement elf on the shelf and how I use her as more of a classroom kindness elf rather than a, an elf that reports behaviors in the classroom so um, in the past I have done you know a true elf on the shelf where she comes and she reports back to Santa I even had like elf surveillance which is all super cute right Ivy please don't touch the tripod <laughs> what I've noticed is that 
Um, you know, I have a lot of cultures in my classroom. I have a lot of cultures and a lot of religions, and I don't want it to be a, you know, Christmas-focused thing in my classroom because I don't want that one kid that, you know, has been told not to believe in elves or has gone home and asked their parents, you know, I don't want that to be an internal battle for them. Ivy, Lacey, can you please not chew on that bone? in the past and I really felt like some kiddos that didn't um, that don't necessarily believe in the elf um, or have been told not to believe in it it has been kind of like an internal battle and I don't want to interfere with that so um, some years I have done it because you know you got to really read your class and know your class know your families know your kids beliefs and cultures um, to know if you can do something like that in your room definitely go ask your principal's opinion because they know their you know the diversity the best go ask your ENL teacher I'm going to be giving you my three tips on how to use a classroom elf with keeping all of your religions and cultures in mind. So that is the first tip. Number one is to go ask your principal, go talk with your team, reach out to your families, have a feel of what they believe in. Um, if anybody is strongly against it, because you never want to have that surprise like, hey, <laughs> uh, no type of thing. So reach out to your families or just kind of feel them out. I'll talk with your kids around the holidays, see what they talk about, see what they don't um, that would be tip number one so tip number two is the way you implement it as a behavior management tool years past I would use the elf as a behavior management tool there's all kinds of stuff on Pinterest that you can use for being nice or naughty definitely all my opinion by the way like if you're doing this it's totally fine um, in my opinion especially now that I've grown with conscious discipline, which we'll talk about conscious discipline in just a second because you guys are super interested in it. Now is not a behavior management tool that I use in December. It's not an elf that reports back to Santa. It's not an elf that um, reports back to the North Pole. It truly is just a kindness challenge elf. So it brings kindness challenges and peace and happiness into the classroom um, for a 12 day countdown basically. So, um, quick conscious discipline plug so if you're not interested in conscious discipline then you can skip over to tip number three with conscious discipline kids have um certain behaviors so we're going to talk a bit about bad behaviors bad behaviors and behaviors that happen because of impulsiveness behaviors or anything like that any behaviors that happen that are not following the rules the students say today We'll take an example from today. I had a student that was running back and forth, jumping over this little backpack that was in the room, like literally just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it was driving me crazy, right? But I was teaching whole group on the floor and needed to address that after I was done teaching or else I would have completely gotten everybody else off task and probably made the classroom feel a little, you know, unsafe by me telling that, stu you know, calling that student out. I waited until I was done, waited until I gave them directions, and then I walked around and, you know, explained to that student, old Mrs. Peters or Miss Lace or whatever before conscious discipline Ashley would have said why aren't you on the carpet <laughs> or something along the lines of you know I asked you to be on the carpet five seconds ago why are you not on the carpet or you need to get on the carpet because you're not listening or something along those lines is something that naturally kind of came out of me right well, conscious discipline Ashley now would have said something along the lines of, you didn't hear any of that lesson by doing this act that you were doing, by jumping over a backpack, and now you are not gonna know what to do. So it's kind of more of a responsibility thing. I would have said, this act is not being responsible and it's not being respectful. Letting them kind of realize the consequences, if that makes sense, instead of telling them the consequences, letting them realize the consequences of, well, now I have double work. Um, you're totally right, Mrs. Peters. Like, even though, guys, this was an impulsive behavior, so there's nothing that we could have done <laughs> to prevent it. Does that make sense? I hope this is making sense. Basically, you know, whenever you are talking with a student about their behavior, you want to um, put it on the students not that they are doing something for you that they are behaving for you or following the rules for you it's that they're following the rules to be a good person and to be a respected person and to be um, to learn how to be responsible with that 
Uh, that's where, you know, the elf comes into play on if the students are behaving for the elf, then they kind of lose that sense of responsibility and um, respectfulness and why they are behaving well in the first place and why they're being good listeners and, um, you know, why they are being active listeners and good listeners and why they are following the school rules in the first place. Um, they're not doing it for you. They're not doing it for the elf. They're doing it for themselves, to doing it for our classroom to create a safe and inviting place. Place. So now officially with tip number two, knowing that conscious discipline thing that I've been using, it wouldn't be right for me to say the elf is watching your behavior. It wouldn't be right because um, they shouldn't be behaving for the elf. They should be behaving because it's the right thing to do. Does that make sense, guys? I hope that makes sense. Um, now, not to say that you can't say like anything along the lines of, wow, I bet the elf saw you line up so quietly. Like I definitely did that like once today, but making your whole day about that, like the elf is watching, you better line up quietly for the elf or um, I bet the elf saw you do something bad. That type of thing um, can probably be left out. The magic will still be there, but that could probably be left out because what happens in January when you don't have one, they've lost all that sense of responsibility and self-respect and respect for the classroom and for their peers and for their neighbor and for their teacher that um, because they're so used to behaving for an object. Does that make sense, guys? I don't know if that makes sense or not, but that's kind of what I'm playing with this year. Seriously, guys, look at my needy animals. I mean, come on. Can we just... <sighs> Yeah, so tip number two is to not use the ELF as a classroom management technique, like your main source of classroom management, um, because it might wreck what you already have in place. It might wreck your good character traits that you are all teaching your own classrooms. Enough about that, because I know that that is an opinionated thing. I know some people use that, um, and that is totally fine. That is how I'm using the ELF in more of a positive way this year, so I just wanted to share that with you guys. So, tip number three to have a kindness classroom ELF is the ELF needs to bring kindness challenges every single day. All sorts of stuff on Pinterest, and you don't even have to have anything, really. You, the ELF can just, like, write it on a board, or the ELF can bring notes or cards or letters. Um, there are different things on Pinterest. I'll leave some of my favorites down below. With the ELF, the ELF can bring kindness challenges every single week and every single day. You saw the one for tomorrow. She moved to the projector and had a note hanging down for their kindness challenge tomorrow. So your elf can be a great way to teach different ways to spread kindness throughout the month of December. And that can go for any religion. And that can go for any culture. Spreading kindness is something that we all try and teach to our kids. I mean, be kind, you know, hashtag be kind has been a huge thing since, um, um, wonder came out and I think it's one of those things that kids are hearing a lot more about lately they're hearing the word kind a lot so having a kindness classroom elf that brings kindness challenges will teach my kiddos ways to spread kindness and peace for our earth okay guys so that was my take on my classroom elf beliefs and what I'm doing this year let me know what you guys do or if you do one I want to know what you guys do special with your classroom elf do you have a kindness elf do you have a regular elf let me know some funny stories of different things that your elves have done in the classroom I know that every single day that my kids walk in it's just the magic and the sparkle is just in their eyes and I love seeing that every year it's a perfect time of year kind of mid-year to kind of pop them up and engage them and um, especially if especially if it's teaching them something on how to be a better person, because that's really what we want with our kids. We want to be the role models and have them learn things from us on how to be better human beings for our future society. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed day three of Teach Miss. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so don't miss a Teach Miss video and the notification bell. You are notified immediately whenever I post a video because they are on different times that I'm posting them. It's whenever I can get them edited. I'm trying to get them edited the night or the morning after but we'll see I'm being pretty relaxed about the whole situation to not stress myself out so um, make sure you're notified so you do not miss a video so thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you in the next one bye